It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160. And in the studio with me this morning, three distinguished gentlemen, as we talk to you about uh, Vietnam Veterans Day coming up. Uh, National Vietnam War Veterans Day program is next Tuesday, a week from today. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people from my left to right, Indiana County Sheriff Bob Fiock, Wesley Wirtz, um, American Legion, correct, Wes? And Jonathan Bogert uh, from the Indiana County Historical and Genealogical Society. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you all with us here today. And, uh, well, this is, uh, you know, uh, when we talk about worthy events, uh, this certainly meets that definition. Uh, who's taken the lead here to tell me about the program itself? We'll start off with Wes. Oh, Wes, Wes, you get, you get the honor here. Oh, joy. Uh, this will be our second annual. Uh, we would have had, this would have been our third, but due to COVID restrictions, we couldn't, weren't able to do so. So we're celebrating this as though it is our second annual, even though it would be our third. Mm-hmm. Um, this program this year is a little bit um, more in length than previous years because we've added to it um, a few things. Is We have a pinning ceremony for our Vietnam veterans um, that served in during the Vietnam War era. Uh, we also have a special unveiling exhibit that I'm sure Jonathan will talk a little bit about, as well as potential proclamation from the commissioners and several guest speakers, including one who's going to speak about Jimmy Stewart and his involvement during Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's where we're at as of right now. We're still putting everything together. It's creeped up on us as we were just talking about. Yeah, yeah, those things tend to happen. And And actually, when you talk about Vietnam veterans, Sometimes it's, it surprises me, and I don't know if it does you fellas, uh, but um, sometimes they're hard to find. Uh, they, they're, they're out there, and, and we know that they are, uh, but they, they don't like to call attention to themselves, uh, uh, and, and they're a very humble group, and, and sometimes so we don't really recognize uh, that, that, that they were uh, people who served in Vietnam. And, uh, and that, that as puzzling as that is, we certainly hope that we can uh, we can coax them out to come to this night because it's all about them. One of the things, uh, Todd, that, uh, like I said, it, they a lot of them don't want to go and renew and think about stuff that they've been trying to forget about for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was there. I know there's a lot of stuff I wish I could forget about, but it's the fact that we need to get the recognition out to these Vietnam veterans. Because what they went through when they come home was terrible. Yeah. And one of the things that the Vietnam veterans vowed that uh, any other war veterans coming home from Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever would never be treated the way they were. And mm-hmm. we're trying to get that information out and let these guys come home and get special thank yous and respect for giving their service to the country. So um, those sorts of recognitions that should have been made 50 years ago um, finally have a chance to come out to light now uh, for these these gentlemen and ladies as well exactly. uh, who served in Vietnam. And, um, and, and you're right, um, we don't want to equate what their experiences was in the theater uh, with what they experienced coming home, but it certainly wasn't a picnic either way. That's, that's for certain. Yeah. I know specifically I had an incident at the Pittsburgh airport, and I couldn't believe it happened to me. Yeah. But it was there, so You've, you had yeah. to deal with it. You've told us of that before, and uh, and it's shocking to us in today's environment, but mm-hmm. but it, it really is the case. Jonathan Bogert, um, uh, Wes uh, intimated that there's a, a, a an unveiling coming up. What's that about? Yes. So back, if you recall, when the Wall That Heals came to the area, mm-hmm. uh, there were a number of rubbings that were taken of the names of the Indiana fellows that were killed in action over in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And we have actually taken those rubbings and assembled them into sort of an Indiana wall that has all the names of the individuals from Vietnam that were killed in action. So we also, there were a couple of folks that died outside of the country, and we have a way of giving them recognition, too, as part of the display. And it's mobile, so it'll be able to move to different places. We're thinking potentially schools, courthouse, et cetera, Mm -hmm. Um, but something to provide recognition and awareness uh, of the those who are killed as well as those who served and are still with us today. 
Yeah. Oh, it sounds very, very special. And, uh, and, and again, it's something that is more than appropriate. And, and I like the educational element of it as well, uh, because uh, you've been, uh, one of the things that we want to make sure is that, you know, World War II veterans, there are very few of them left. Uh, Korean War veterans as well, their numbers are dwindling. Vietnam veterans, uh, their numbers are dwindling as well. Uh, as, uh, as we all get older, uh, there's something I think in the rule book that says we all must. Uh, and so as we all get older and those memories start to fade, we have to do everything we can to keep those particular memories alive. Oh, absolutely. And I would say, you know, usually generationally, there's, we saw it with the Civil War, with World War I, World War II. As that generation aged and began passing away, people wished that they would have talked to those individuals and, you know, understood what they went through. And I think that's the important thing is that dialogue to yeah. understand what people went through. Yeah, it's it's something else. When I grew up, Bob, when you grew up, uh, there were still World War One veterans walking exactly. around. Exactly, yes. Uh, and so you and I were not all that separate in ages, and I don't know who that says more about. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, the World War One veterans are all gone. We want to make sure that we preserve the memories of, of everybody who has ever served our country. Wes, um, I, I know that we don't know the names of all of the Vietnam veterans, um, but we want to get them out into this program uh, so for folks who haven't been contacted uh, and aren't on the list yet to get pins, um, I, I'm assuming that there's still a chance that they can. Yes. As a matter of fact, um, Christina Longora, the Veterans Initiative Specialist with Advocate Health, is going to be doing the pinning ceremony. And all we need from those Vietnam veterans in advance would be their name, rank, and um, years of service. However, if they do show up that day, um, we will have pins available for them, and then their um, paperwork will be mailed to them afterwards. Mm -hmm. In addition to the pins for the Vietnam veterans, though, we also have pins for widows of deceased Vietnam veterans. We also have family recognition pins, mm -hmm. and uh, Christina will be acknowledging that during the program as well. Yeah, yeah. And those aren't necessarily for those uh, who were killed in action, but for veterans who have passed away since they came home, correct? It's those that have served during the era. Those yes. who served, yes. So their surviving uh, spouses are also uh, certainly invited to come, and they will receive a pin as well. Correct. Uh, we are encouraging people to RSVP if they know in advance as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That way we have a head count for, um, for appetizers and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and by doing it to, to RSVP, they can just call the Historical Society at 724-463-9600. All right. Um, I know that there are uh, great, great organizations which serve veterans and are made up of veterans, and, and I'm assuming that they're on board as sponsors of this? Yes. We have teamed up with American Legion Post 141, um, the Auxiliary Unit Post 141, VFW post-1989, and, of course, the Historical Society to make this event possible. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan Bogert, when we think about the Historical and Genealogical Society of Indiana County, there are so many different things that happen there. This, I would assume, is one of the, the better programs uh, that uh, so many people are interested in. This is, this is really a special night. It is. It's, again, about recognition and commemoration, and the program committee, as well as the other organizations that we have worked with, have put in a tremendous amount of work to make all of this possible. Um, it's going to be great to be in the armory, at, for those who don't know, at 621 Wayne Avenue uh, for the event. We have collaborated with a number of other organizations. Um, we have a display on loan from the Jimmy Stewart Museum um, that people will be able to see, mm -hmm. and uh, Wes mentioned the ladies auxiliary from Post 141 actually helped to raise funds um, for uh, appetizers for the evening. So a, a huge group effort in on this. So. How does the program actually line out? How, what, what's going to be happening on that particular night? Well, we actually have a, uh, a uh, order of events here, sort of an itinerary. And um, we're, it's going to be an introduction. We're going to uh, have a... Uh, prayer, and then the Pledge of Allegiance, Star Spangled Banner, and then we have a guest speaker, Dr. Truby, who will be talking um, about Jimmy Stewart and his relation to uh, Vietnam, and then the potential proclamation, as well as Herb giving the Herb Ledich, um, who you know, who has given, mm -hmm. will be giving a brief history, and then we'll be moving on to the pinning ceremony, um, some music, 
and then as well as um, the roll call and then the unveiling of the exhibit itself. Mm -hmm. So now, now when you say Dr. Truby, J. David? Yes. All right. Oh, so we know we're in for a special, <laughs> a special treat uh, with him. Uh, he was one of my professors way back before Hector was a pup. Um, uh, Sheriff Bob Fayok, um, because you are a Vietnam vet, and maybe we could swing that microphone back around to you a little bit. Um, yes, sir. Uh, tell me this. Do Vietnam veterans in Indiana County generally get together or have opportunities uh, where they're able to gather together as a group for events such as this? They do have get-together times, Todd, but uh, it's not that big of a group. Mm -hmm. uh, the... Agencies and stuff are available to do this. Uh, we have different programs for uh, dislocated veterans, uh, whether they from are from Vietnam or other areas. But um, again, a lot of the Vietnam veterans do not like to get together and speak about stuff. Mm -hmm. They do get together, but it's not like the disabled vets. The disabled veterans seem to get together more than the Vietnam veterans. Yeah. But um, it, it's just something that anybody that needs to talk uh, anymore, we have a lot of uh, suicides among the veterans more and more every day. Mm -hmm. I forget what it is, but I think it was maybe one in eight of the veterans over the past 10 years have committed suicide. Yeah. And it's an ongoing process. And as much as I hate to even say that now, even it's uh, up into the law enforcement yeah. committing suicides. Um, when did Vietnam War Veterans Day become a national thing? Uh, I think that was the one where it was put in place by uh, President Trump. Uh, I'm trying to think what year that was. But it had been there, and he made it a national holiday. So it's within the last six years. I was going to say, within, I'm thinking 20? No, just not, just no, a couple no, of years 20, 2016, for some reason, I'm thinking that. Yeah, yeah. well, that would be when he was elected. So he was in office right. from 17 to to the end of 20. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it, it is a very young event in terms of its longevity, but let's hope that it's uh, something that gets stronger and stronger every year. So the program is coming. It is uh, next Tuesday, Historical and Genealogical Society of Indiana County. Um, you're at uh, 621 Water or not Water Street, Wayne Avenue. 621 Wayne Avenue, and I want to point out, uh, first year we did it, uh, some folks had comments about parking. This year we did work with Greystone uh, to provide parking. They've been gracious to allow us to uh, use their lot. And we also have Jack Lucas from Hilltop Baptist, who will be running a shuttle between Greystone's lot That's and great. the society. So for those who can't walk, who can't find parking, there will be parking at the Greystone lot on Water Street, but where you want to be is 621 Wayne Avenue uh, at the point in the old armory. Very good. Gentlemen, thank you all for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thank, thank, you. thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County WCCS. Hello, this is John Leftall speaking on behalf.